In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about symbols. I'm going to be showing you the main differences between them and how to use them effectively. Okay, so if I go to insert and go on new symbol, there are three types of symbol, movie clip, button, and graphic. Now, the type of symbol which a button is, is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm going to be going over that a little bit later in the video. But what I mainly want to focus on in this tutorial is the differences between movie clips and graphics. So if I go to this new file I've made, and here I've got an example scene set up, so I'm going to go to publish preview. So earlier I made this bouncing ball animation, and I put the same exact frames in both a graphic symbol and a movie clip symbol. So I can show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the differences between using these two types of symbols. And some differences are quite obvious, and some are more subtle. So one interesting feature about the graphic symbol is that it runs in parallel with the main timeline. So what I mean is, if I go inside the symbol, all the frames in the timeline inside the graphic run in sync with the main timeline. And this means that if I scrub through the frames on the main timeline, it will also scrub through all the frames in the graphics timeline as well, in the same order. So I've always got a live preview of my graphic on the stage, and this is really handy when animating. So the movie clip works slightly differently. The timeline inside the movie clip is completely independent to the main timeline. So a good example is if I delete all the frames but the first one, and I go back to publish preview, what you'll find is that the movie clip works fine, whereas the graphic is completely static. And the reason behind this is that because there's only one frame on the main timeline, it means that the graphic can only display one frame as well. Now, because the movie clip's timeline is completely independent, it can just play all its frames in a loop, even though there's only one frame. So because of this, movie clips are generally used in more interactive scenarios, such as a menu screen. And the ability to have an independent timeline to the main timeline means that movie clips are kind of like having mini scenes inside the main scene. And because of the graphics ability to have a parallel timeline with the main timeline means that it's often used in animation because it's so much easier to keep track of where all your frames are. Okay, I'm just going to press undo to get my frames back. Alright, so the movie clip does have some big advantages. And one of these is the fact that you can apply a lot of effects to it. In terms of visual effects, you can use a lot of tools on movie clips which you can't use on other symbols. One example is the use of filters, which is really handy. You can also use a lot of action scripts on movie clips. And remember how I mentioned before how a movie clip is kind of like a mini scene? It means that inside a movie clip you can put stuff like sounds or interactive elements and they will work fine on the timeline. Now the graphic on the other hand does have limited effects which you can apply to it. In terms of visual effects, the only real ones you get are the style effects, which are very basic. It also has a number of other limitations, such as the fact that you can't use action script with it, and also if you put sound effects inside of a graphic, they won't play on the main timeline. It's also worth noting that movie clips will add slightly more file size to your flash files compared to graphics, so if you're really conscious about file size, it's worth keeping in mind. Alright, so in summary, you can use both graphics and movie clips when you're animating. However, I would mainly recommend using graphics considering how easy it is to determine what frame you're on, and it's much easier to organize. And if you're ever creating an interactive element in Flash, or you need a symbol which you can apply a lot of effects to, always use a movie clip. And don't forget that movie clips can be like scenes themselves. Pretty much anything you can do on this main timeline, you can do in a timeline inside a movie clip. And also, you can even put movie clips inside other movie clips if you want to. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to talk about the button symbol. So I'm just going to go to this new flash file. And here I have a very simple button design which I made earlier. Now, I'm not going to be covering how to program a button in this video. I'm going to be covering that in a future tutorial. But what I'm going to be showing you is how to use the button symbol. So I'm going to select my design. I'm going to right click and convert to symbol. So I've got my button selected, so let's press OK. So I'm going to go inside the button symbol. So inside there are four main components. There's up, over, down, and hit. So up is what your button looks like when you haven't pressed it yet. So it's just its normal state. So it looks fine for the moment. So for over, it's when your cursor is over the button before you've pressed it. So for this, I'm going to make a new keyframe. 
I'm going to convert this into a movie clip. And I'm going to go to style and brightness. And I'm going to ramp up the brightness to make a bit of a light effect. That will do fine. So down is in between when you've pressed the button but you haven't released it yet. So you've sort of held down the cursor over it. So for this, I'm going to make a new keyframe. And I'm just going to adjust the brightness so it's a bit darker. That looks great. Now hit is basically the hot spot of the button. So what I would always do, unless it's a very unique button style, is to just select the up keyframe, copy, and paste it onto hit. All right, so we're ready to test the button. So we're currently on up, and then we're on over and down. So the button works perfectly. Alright, so I hope you found this tutorial useful and I would definitely recommend you experiment with some different types of symbols and get used to using them as they are a very important part of Flash. So I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!